Hello, Hard Video Audio Stuff, welcome back. Today for you guys, I'm going to be taking a look at Canon's 16-35 f4 IS lens, one of the most important focal ranges in my kit. I'll be going through all the most important factors of this lens, its features, its build quality, my likes and dislikes. I then also have to compare it to my current ultra-wide, the Tokina 16-28. But first things first, what is it? Canon's 16-35 f4 IS sits somewhere in the middle of their range, of ultra wide zooms. They consider their 11 to 24 f4 as the top of the range. Well, it, I mean, it certainly is in terms of price, as it costs almost £3,000. Down from that, we have their 16 to 35 f2.8 version 3, which is still quite expensive at £2,000. Then we have the one that I bought, which is the f4 IS, which is around 800 and something pounds. And then at the bottom of the range in the L series anyway, we have their 17 to 40, which is around 550, something like that. Why did I choose the F4 IS version? For a few very good reasons, and I will reveal that later on. The purchase of this lens was kind of a big deal for me, because it means that I may well be replacing my Tokina 16 to 28, which I've used for a long time and I use a lot because it's the lens I use to shoot these scenes. Does the Canon live up to the Tokina? How do they compare? Which will I keep? That's all to come. But firstly, what features does it have? It has a zoom range of 16 to 35. Pretty obvious, right? But that means you've got everything from a very natural looking view at 35mm, very similar to what the human eye sees, all the way up to an ultra-wide head spinning, warped looking 16 millimeters. It has image stabilization, which I welcome in any lens. And as it's not one of these ancient IS lenses from Canon, it means that it's silent and actually the image stabilization works really well, but not as good as the sensor stabilization you get in the Sony a7S II for video. So I turn the IS off. It has a filter thread of 77 millimeters, which is really great because all of my filters are 77mm. But I'm possibly skipping over the bigger picture factor that it has a filter thread. Barely any ultra wide zooms have filter threads because they have some sort of crazy bulbous front element, much like my Tokina did. So it's a big deal, right? No? Oh, okay, well, I, I thought it was. Also, it has the weather sealing rubber gasket thing by the lens mount, which is kind of a bittersweet win for me. It's nice to have, it's just I'm using the sponge like Sony Alpha bodies and I'm adapting EF glass, so I'll, I'll just have to continue to not shoot in the rain, which is kind of tricky because I live in the UK. But is it well built? Well, yeah, obviously, it's a Canon L lens. The materials used are really great throughout, and I have no gripes whatsoever. That's... I can't really... That, that's it. I did lots of testing to see which I preferred out of the Canon and the Tokina. First up is the bokeh test. Some would say it's fairly irrelevant because with such wide-angle lenses, it's pretty hard to get any kind of noticeable bokeh. Both lenses were at f4 for all of these tests, and the Tokina looked like they have slightly bigger, bokeh balls, albeit not as round, but one thing I did notice was the Tokina had unusual flaring and fringing around the bokeh balls. Overall, I prefer the outer focus areas of the Canon, however, the Tokina has the advantage that it will go to f2.8, and the Canon has the advantage that it can go to 35mm, so it's sort of a draw. Next, I tested sharpness, and I did it the usual way that I do it. Film something, zoom in super tight, and see what the differences are. Zoomed all the way into 400%, the Tokina, we can see, performed really well. However, the Canon does reveal more of that really fine detail. I ran the same test at 28 millimeters, and I found very similar results to at 16, not to mention the really surprising difference in contrast between the Tokina and the Canon. Next, I tested focus breathing by setting both lenses to f22 and then focusing from close focus to infinity. Both lenses did really well at 16mm and 28mm, in fact I may even give the win to the Tokina in this case. Next I tested flaring and of course with the Canon I can detach the lens hood, which is not the case with the Tokina. So you might think that this puts the Canon at a bit of a disadvantage, but actually it performed really really well. The Tokina however seemed really susceptible to unnecessary flaring, 
I expect is probably to do with its bulbous front element. I also noticed some pretty horrible artifacts from the LED light, which I don't like. This is just another big tick in the box for the Canon. I then tested the lenses on my main angle, both at f4, and I was really surprised by the results actually. The most noticeable things being that the Canon has slightly better light transmission at f4, and it has slightly warmer colours. I then wanted to look on the waveform to see what was going on, and it seems I was right. There's noticeably more reds where my skin tones are, and overall it's a brighter exposure with a touch more contrast. And then my likes and dislikes. I'm going to start with my dislikes just to get them out of the way because there aren't that many. And my first gripe is with the focus ring. And when I first picked it up, my first impression was, oh God, it's a bit too damped. But then you quickly get used to it like anything. And I think the reason I had that reaction is because with the Tokina that I'm currently using, that has, if anything, too loose a focus ring. So that's probably why. And it's just, it's definitely a personal preference thing. Uh, I'm used to it now and it's fine. My second and final gripe is the price for an F4 lens. It's over 800 pounds and no matter how you look at it, that's a lot of money to spend on a lens that's only f4. You know, and I get why they made it an f4. It's smaller, lighter, it's really, really sharp. It's as sharp as the current f2.8 version 3. I, I get it, but it's just a lot to drop. And maybe, I don't, maybe I'm just cheap. Yeah, that's prob, yeah. And then on to my likes. And thankfully, there are lots more. And I'm gonna start with the weight, which this thing only weighs 620 grams and when you compare that to the Tokina which weighs a kilo that makes a massive difference that's you know that's a third less weight I mean that's massive and that will really really make a big difference for handheld filming for gimbal work that kind of thing secondly was the sharpness and I was super impressed by this not just the sharpness, I mean I compared it to the Tokina and it's noticeably sharper um, but it's also the distortion. I noticed went around, around the edge of every single frame it had noticeably less distortion. Um, this is all good news and it's just a sign of what a quality bit of glass it is. I've already mentioned that this lens does not have a bulbous front element and that means that I can put my filters on the front which is a huge deal for me. Having lenses where I can't attach my filters on really grinds my gears. I really don't like having to stop down to f18 or increase my shutter speed to one two thousandth of a second just to be able to use my ultra wide outdoors. I really love how wide the focus ring is on this lens. It's like the boffins at Canon thought about who actually might be using this lens, i.e. lots of videographers amongst photographers, and thought to themselves, yeah, let's make this a really great handling lens, especially for manual focus. One surprising thing I noticed on the very first day of testing this lens was how little the focus shifted when zooming. I mean, this is something that is really rare to find on photography lenses, but actually something essential on cinematography lenses. I, I honestly reckon that if you just stop down a little bit, you could zoom pretty comfortably and your subject would stay in focus. Another surprise was the quality of the lens hood. It snaps really nicely into place and stays there. You may be wondering, why is that a surprise? Well, the lens hood that came with my Canon 24-70 f4is is pretty feeble actually, and the replacements are very expensive. So yeah, I just thought this is not something that Canon should mess up. And they didn't, so that's good. But Harv, why make the switch from the Tokina to the Canon? Well, I had plenty of good reasons for this, and they are, in order of importance, the ability to attach filters, the huge 380 gram drop in weight, the noticeable improvements in image quality, particularly in sharpness and distortion, the image stabilization, going from the stupid AF to MF push-pull selector on the Tokina to the normal switch version on the Canon. The extra, albeit small, increase in zoom range. And finally, my opinion, and I am super pleased with this lens. It's just a class act. It's super sharp, it handles brilliantly, it's not too heavy, and it gives you great color and contrast. Whilst it's not an f2.8 lens, which I know will put a few of you off, it performs exceptionally, and it, it honestly exceeds all of my expectations. 
It's a thoroughbred, a proper thoroughbred L lens. Of course, there are lots of alternatives. There's all of the aforementioned Canon lenses, the 17 to 40, the 16 to 35 f 2.8, and their pretty amazing 11 to 24 f 4. Of course, if you're in the Nikon world, you have pretty much just one choice, the 14 to 24 which is a very good lens though. Of course, not forgetting about the Tokina 16-28 f2.8. It, it's a good lens. I don't want to sort of poo-poo it. It really is good. It's an f2.8 lens, so if that's important to you, it's a really good kind of gateway into the f2.8, the larger aperture ultra-wide zooms. Plus, you can get it for next to, well, not that much on the used market, so definitely check there as well. Not forgetting about Sigma's 12-24 f4, which is a super cool lens, and they have an f2.8 en route. Sony now, of course, have a 16-35 to f2.8, and it's stupidly expensive, um, but very good, I hear. Not tried it. I hope I can one day. And finally, there's the Tamron 15-30 to f2.8, which is a pretty unique lens because it's it's slightly wider and it has image stabilization. So that's pretty unique and it's actually really well priced. So I did consider that one as well. Um, and all of these lenses I will link below for you to check out. Um, and um, yeah, you can decide for yourself, I guess. And that's it for now. I really hope you found this useful, helpful, informative, interesting, all of that kind of stuff. And I'll catch you next time. See you guys. <laughs>